Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be going over Sultai Omnitel. This deck has taken the timeless meta by storm ever since Show and Tell entered the meta with MKM, and it has showed no signs of stopping. A ban seems inevitable, but for now, or at least a restriction, but for now, we are free to play the deck, so that's exactly what I've been doing. Uh, and before we get into the video, I just want to say that uh, if you want to learn more about this deck, if the upcoming deck guide appeals to you, you like the gameplay, and you want to learn how to play it even better, I'm going to cover the basics, but if you really want to take your skill with this deck to the next level, you should check out my Patreon in the description. I put a link there, and I've got an in-depth deck guide on this deck up on there. Uh, it's got everything you need to know about how to play the deck, um, from like an explanation of all the cards, to a sideboard guide, to how to play around hate pieces, and why I built my list the exact way it's built. So uh, definitely go and check that out. Uh, and I post uh, all of my in-depth articles and deck guides on there. Anyway, let's get back to the deck tech. So this deck is built around, well, show and tell. Show and tell, really powerful sorcery. Uh, not particularly balanced, even though it is symmetrical. For two and a blue, you get to put an artifact creature enchantment or land into play, and your opponent gets to do the same. So the most powerful to card to put into play with it is Omniscience. Because once you got Omniscience to play, you can train Atraxa, you can chain Atraxa Grand Unifier, and dig through time, and assemble the team, and all this card draw to draw through your entire deck. And the way you actually finish the game is you cast Mastermind's Acquisition, uh, tutor a card from outside the game, so we go to the sideboard and grab our one copy of Approach of the Second Sun. Um, we cast it the first time, and then use an Atraxa or a Dig Through Time to grab it from our deck, and cast it a second time to win the game. So that's that's like the most common uh, play pattern of this deck, like what it's trying to achieve. Basically, you just need Show and Tell, put on Omniscience, and one of these big spells, either Assemble the Team, which looks through the top third for any card, Dig Through Time, which looks through the top seven for two cards, or Atraxa, which looks for a card of each type from the top ten, They'll all be able to um, chain you through the deck uh, very, very consistently. I don't think I've ever whiffed on either of them or any of the three with an omniscience in play uh, because the deck just is full of them. And also other card draw like Brainstorm, which draws three, Born Upon the Wind, which cycles, and uh, Lorien Revealed, which draws three. So really difficult to whiff. Uh, so yeah, that's that's like the most powerful thing to be doing. Um, Alternatively, you can also put an Atraxa Grand Unifier into play off of Show and Tell, which turns great Atraxa is pretty good, I will say. Uh, you get this huge 7 7 Flying Life Link body that'll stabilize the board for you and just kind of go ham. Uh, now, the one downside of Atraxa is while she's really good against fair decks, decks like Yogg or the Mirror can still beat the 7 7 body, so you really want to try to use Show and Telling for Atraxa to help you set up for. Uh, another show and tell in the future, though obviously in the mirror, things get really wonky, and I'll talk about that more in a sec. But yeah, show and tell, tracks again, reunifier, gives us four more targets for show and tell that are pretty good. Um, and then other than that, the deck is really just built around finding and casting show and tell. So uh, for the one drop slots, we've got four copies of Brainstorm, just really good at digging, and sometimes you've got cards in hand, you've got like two omnisciences, or, you know, Stuff that you don't really want in your hand, too many dig through times, the tracks is whatever. Uh, and Brainstorm is great for just getting those out of there with the Chef Fetchland. A uh, really powerful card, just don't get caught by Bowmasters. And then we've got the Dark Ritual and Thoughtseize package. Dark Ritual is really good for enabling turn two show and tells. And then Thoughtseize is just a great disruptive card on its own, can ensure that your opponent doesn't put anything too crazy in off of your show and tell. And um, the absolute nuts with this deck is going. Dark Ritual plus Thoughtseize plus Show and Tell on turn two. Um, so, you know, if you play like a tap land on turn one or like another one mana spell, then turn two you can go uh, just strip them of whatever counterplay they have and then Show and Tell a big thing into play and the game just ends. So that's really, really strong. But both of these fly on their own. Dark Ritual can also power up a uh, Dig Through Time if you need that. So very, very solid cards. I found the... Um, Dark Ritual Thoughtseize version to play better than uh, the versions with Impulse Effect because Dark Ritual and Thoughtseize 
give you a lot of counterplay against hate. So, like, for example, if your opponent's trying to um, put in a hate card against your Omniscience, uh, if you can Dark Ritual, Show and Tell a turn earlier, then maybe Atraxa can do the trick where it otherwise wouldn't have. And Thoxys, of course, can just take whatever hate, they, hate card they have before you cast the Show and Tell. Uh, two drops, we've got first up, Assemble the Team. Just, you know, this deck really needs to fight Shem and Tell, so it wants to play Tutors. So you've got four Assemble the Team. Assemble the Team is between 80 and 82% to find you what you need um, if you've got four copies of it in the deck. And then about 70% if you've only got three. And we've got the one of Demonic Tutor, which, you know, Assemble the Team, but never whiffs. Busted, 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 but restricted, of course. And we've got three Born Upon the Wind. This is a tech card for the mirror and a way to beat Artifact or Enchantment Hate. The idea is, in the mirror, if you both put in Omnisciences, you can use Born Upon the Wind to go off before your opponent does uh, with Omniscience. And um, against like a Leyland Binding or something like that, you can put in Omniscience in response to the Leyland Binding, cast Born Upon the Wind, and just go off in response to the Leyland Binding trigger. Um, so pretty powerful card. Does get bored out in some matchups, but... With so many mirrors and so many people teching against show and tell, it's a, it's a nice card to have in the main. Show and tell, obviously, names that card. Maximize acquisition, win condition. Better than uh, Fae of Wishes because it can also search the deck. And the whole thing where like you have two Fae of Wishes and a Fae and a shared summons in the sideboard to grab one of them plus an Atraxa to then get a uh, second sun and then cast an Atraxa to get the second sun. Really unnecessary. Acquisition is going to win you the game basically every time anyway. I've never gotten punished for having the one acquisition over two fey package. And I think just like minimizing the amount of bad draws because acquisition isn't a great draw and other is fey, um, is more optimal. And then as I mentioned before, Atraxa uh, Omniscience. Atraxa is great because it's both um enabler for the omniscience and payoff. Enabler because it's good to cast off the omniscience, payoff because you can also just show and tell into it. And I've got four Dick Through Time. Dick Through Time is um is a great card. This deck is really good at filling up its graveyard. It's got a lot of cheap spells and fetch lands and whatnot. And um, Dick Through Time also being an instant means you can cast it in response to like a Lele Binding or your opponent's spells. People have got omniscience to try to look for your Born Upon the Wind, and you can try to chain them together as well. Uh, so pretty powerful um, card. Again, not great in multiples because it kind of cannibalizes itself with Delve, but still um, worth having the four up because of how good it is with an omniscience in play. As for the lands, Mystic Sanctuary is just a messed up card. This deck has only two non-islands, Swamp and Beseju, um, and otherwise all islands for Mystic Sanctuary. The card's really good, it can help you uh, kind of overcome the hand disruption like Thoughtseize. If you've got Thoughtseize, you can put the show until back on top. You can um, make sure you don't whiff off of your Assemble the Team. Uh, make sure you win with Omniscience by putting like a Dig Through Time back on top. Really strong card. Uh, and I've got all eight blue fetches and three Lorian Reveals, and alongside Mystic Sanctuary, they can also get the new Surveillance from MKM, which are pretty powerful. They're good for enabling Dell, and card selection is really important in a deck like this because it's really just looking for some very specific cards. And also, you know, every so often you just don't have uh, something to spend your mana on, so being, to fetch one of the, being able to fetch one of these is really strong. Um, speaking of Lorien Revealed, it's a land that's also live with omissions in play. It's a show flow effect for Brainstorm. It's our powerful non-basic islands. Uh, a lot of lists are in two. I prefer three. Just because um, I think it's better than most people give it credit for. Um, and yeah, other than that, we've got Shocklands. Pretty standard. Pretty high amount of Shocklands because there are no more fetch lands to run. And I don't want more basic islands because I don't cast Assemble a team. And I don't want non-islands because those don't work with Mystic Sanctuary. Uh, basic Swamp is pretty important, because sometimes you need to fetch off of Polluted Delta without taking damage, and then Seiju can blow up like an Omniscience or something. I hear those are pretty popular these days, also like a little inviting, so it's not having one of those in the main. As for the sideboard, uh, 3 Fail of Push uh, helps a lot against decks like Zoo, uh, Taxes style decks can help can hit hate pieces like Lavinia and Boromir, Fail of Summer, uh, good against Jun, good against Blue Black Control, Really just a pretty messed up card. Also uh, gets bored in, in the mirror to get around Thought Seasons and Spell Pierces and whatnot. Uh, fourth Born Upon the Wind. You know, some matchups you just gotta have the full place out of these to have it more consistently. Pretty cross and grip. Uh, pretty good in the mirror. Actually, really insane in the mirror because you can put it on omniscience and then destroy their omniscience before they have priority if it's your turn. And um, 
you know, you can do some like weird tricks where like they put it in an omniscience on their turn, but you put it on Shaxa, so a Shaxa trigger goes in the stack, you can and grip their omniscience before they have a chance to do anything with it. Uh, so yeah, very, very important card to have in the mirror. Julian Leyland of Sanctity, good against like random decks like Belcher, also just great against Jun because most of their interaction is hand disruption and it stops stuff like, um, which I'm gonna call it, Necromancia as well. Approach the Second Sun, this deck's win condition, Sarah's Emissary, uh, a lot of decks like Yogg or Natural or Titan just literally can't answer it, only have a couple of outs in their deck, so it's a nice one to have that you can tutor for. Also, before we get into the video, one thing that I forgot to mention, another perk that you get from subscribing to my Patreon is access to my private Discord, but I'm actually opening up my Discord to the public. So if you want to join that, go ahead and click the link in the description and you'll be in. However, patrons do get something special. They get access to patron only channels. So you'll get more of my attention. You can ask like really detailed questions and I'll respond as opposed to code giveaways and such for patrons only and stuff like that. So still get some additional perks as a patron. Uh, you get priority for getting your questions answered and more in the depth responses and all that. And um, if you want to be part of my community and uh, kind of get to um, talk with me more and get access to like upcoming deck lists and whatnot, then uh, definitely go ahead and join that. Glad to have you. All right, welcome to match number one. We're going to choose to be on the play and can't I'm only going to turn three show and tell on the hand. This deck does mulligan pretty aggressively for its combo, but no need to. Turn 3, put in show and tell, cast show and tell, put in omniscience, cast dig through time, win. Uh, Lars Companions so were probably playing on some sort of Rakdos style deck, so anticipating our thoughts these, but we can say one of these fights just to get a Mystic Sanctuary. We've got the Surveillance to find us some gas, dig through time if the game goes long. This is a uh, pretty ideal hand. Ah, well, if we find a Dark Ritual, we win on turn two. So uh, let's do that, shall we? Well, well, well. That's pretty convenient. All right, unless they put in something very specific, I think we've got this one in the bag. Oh, they're not happy. Oh, they are not happy. <laughs> really? Are we getting roped on turn two? What a way to start off the video. Oh, uh, that's great. Arena players and being salty. Name a more iconic combo. And now we just go ham. Whew. Well, pretty good start to the video, I'd say. I think he turned two in on the play. Nice stomping ground you got there. Nice stomping ground you got there. Well, we are really getting roped. This sucks. Because if they keep doing this, I'm going to have to edit it out. And I really don't feel like doing that. All right, looks like they're just going to time out so they can do this pretty quick. All uh, right, grab, 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 grab. Oh, that's perfect. Because now we can Demonic Tutor. Or Mountains. Master Mountains. Or Approach the Second Sun. Approach the Second Sun. Or Game. Nice. All right, against Jund, we're bringing in the Veil of Summers and we're bringing the Leyland Land Sanctities and let's go like two Fatal Push. So we're boarding out, gonna trim the Brainstorms, gonna trim the Digs, gonna cut the Borns. Brainstorm's a little awkward into Bowmasters. Dig isn't, or Born isn't really necessary. Uh, maybe I'll keep in like one or two. Actually, yeah, you know what? Dark Ritual's bad in this matchup. Although it did look good there, I'll give you that. It's generally not great because you're not trying to like outrace your opponent. Um, so I think I can actually, I'm going to be on the play so I can use Brainstorm on turn one. So Brainstorm is fine. I think on the draw it's a little worse. Uh, we'll keep in two boards in case they have stuff like Tear Asunder. Maybe I'm supposed to go like three dig. I don't think I want the third Fatal Push. It dilutes the deck a little too much. Yeah, somewhere around here, plus minus some Brainstorms, plus minus some boards, plus minus some digs is, is generally where you want to be. And like fluctuate a little depending on what your opponent shows you. The main downside of dig is it's not great if they get like a death right shaman going, but on the play with boarded and thought seizes, I think it's fine. Um again. 
not oh wait we're not on the play we're on the draw i totally forgot that we won um yeah so i guess maybe i was supposed to board out more brainstorms in that case i think that would have been better but it's fine uh because this is a this is a turn three and also we have two omnis which isn't great but if they go like turn one thoughtsies oh whoa okay apparently they're just Oh, and you know what? They actually boarded out Luris, so I'm expecting Blood Moon, Pool of Law, something along those lines. I'm not gonna fire up the brainstorm. If they have a bowmasters, they can they can bowmasters. That's fine. If they if they don't play a two drop in their main phase, then I'll have to play around it. I guess that's so weird. Storm God, I would have not expected a deafening silence. Well, deafening silence is fine. It's still beatable. We just need to find an Atraxa. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and grab an um, Undercity Sewer, I think. Actually, no. You know what? Hedge Maze. Because I'm going to Brainstorm and Fetch next turn. Well, don't really want that. On a Tutor. Okay. It is tempting. I think I'd rather just go Brainstorm and then Fatal Push the Tarmac Wave, though. Because we have some stuff we want to put back, and... Oh, wait. Oh, no, I can just do it on their upkeep. This is fine. Yeah, because I can't do both in the same turn, but I just do it in their upkeep, so it doesn't actually matter. Uh, oh, Gale of Summer. Interesting. So I think we put back... I'm going to keep the second Omni. Put back a land. Is that stupid? It's probably stupid. Because I don't even need the first Omni, really, because of the deafening sounds. But I think this is better. And I'm going to play the fetch, and just go ahead and pass the turn. And now, uh, we can always Veil of Summer if they God sees us. And if they had one, they would probably do it first main to go to the Tarmac Wave. So, uh, I'm just going to wait on the Fatal Push for a sec. Hopefully, we don't get Blood Moon here. But, so is this like Domain Aggro? Bolts my face. Sure, to go to the Goy. Except it doesn't go to the Goy, so I'm not sure what that was about. Well... Um, I don't feel like taking extra damage here, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this now. To be fair, I could have gotten a tap shock, but, um, that seems, oh dear. Okay. Small issue. So we could go Demonic Tutor for Fatal Push, Fatal Push it on their turn. Or we could go Omniscience, eat seven, go to four. Next turn, Demonic Tutor for Atraxa. By Atraxa, we have to jump. That doesn't seem amazing. Yeah, I'm just going to go for this. No! No, auto tapper, no. Uh, okay. Yeah, auto tapper saw the veil of summer. I was like, oh, I'll keep you with a green up. Nope. Not what I wanted. Uh, hopefully, there's not a mint boot coming here. That would not be great. Um, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. I mean, Skidaboo would have been tricky to beat regardless, but no Uh, We do got a 2 here, which I don't love. What's your last card? Is it a Bolt? Yeah. No, I, I decided to get a Traxa because, um, I see. Well, actually, this is winnable. Uh, just gonna go ahead and cycle this Veil of Summer then, I guess. Might as well. Um, oh, that's actually perfect. Oh, that's very perfect. Nice. So, what am I doing here? So it's going to be show and tell Atraxa, and then actually, I'm just going to grab a think because I, I wouldn't mind having two fatal pushes. Um, put an Atraxa, and then on their turn, on their upkeep, I'm going to fatal push the Scourge of the Skyclaves. Uh... I'd rather have big than anything else, right? Seems correct. And then I'll go with assemble and a land. 
and then um, just go ahead and pass the turn. And they have one turn to draw Lightning Bolt or some sort of removal spell that can kill a Traxa. So uh, good luck with that opponent. Just pitch the water you gave. Bam. All right, let's see it. Oh, wait, actually, I should have gotten the Fatal Push inside of the Dig through time, because Dig doesn't work with Lavinia. All right. Well, that should just about be game. Uh, Technically, they go to one here, but then I'm just going to show and tell them on Traxa again next turn if they manage to kill the first one. So, yeah, it's not looking great for them. Wow, they are really salty. That's the uh, that's the average arena player for you, I suppose. Oh, well, fair enough. Yeah, we're just gonna wait. All right, I guess I guess we wait. All right, looks like they're just about timed out. It's funny they spent so long roping me, and their only possible game action literally caused them to die, and that they really just had to consider it. Yeah, fair enough. They roped me so efficiently too. Like they held priority in my upkeep. Now they're gonna hold priority in combat. Truly. Really Dedicated hate from the opponent. Really gotta respect them, a master of their craft, as one could say. Looks like their clocks run out, and the tracks against the hidden. GG. Alright, looks like we've got an opponent from match number two. Had a pretty long queue time, as you can see by the uh, diamond player we're facing. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep this. This hand's got show and tell, which is the most important card to have, because you've got eight payoff, but only four show and tells, and two brainstorms, and a Surveil land off this flooded strand, and you know, if we find one in the next I guess we can't quite do the turn two with Dark Ritual, but um we can fire off some brainstorms and if we don't find what we need, we can ritual into this uh, dig through time maybe. So uh lots of ways to go with this hand, and obviously if we drop Eddie, it's just a turn three. As I was saying, unfortunately, man doesn't quite line up to do the turn two, but Is totally fine. All right, so throw back brainstorm dark ritual, I suppose. Go ahead and get a swamp for this. Nazis. We're already pretty far away from a six sanctuary. I don't see a real reason to take more damage for no reason. Um. Yeah. So looks like some sort of mono red blood moon deck. Don't really think it matters, but I might as well just grab the Mindstone. Because it's their only turn two play. And then we're just show and telling in Omni, casting Dig Through Time, saying GG to our opponent. Give me do the second Omni. Not that it particularly matters, but. Might as well get the second one down in case they have some sort of chaos warpy thing going on. Yeah, it's good. Stuff. Fair enough. I mean, they probably should have let me show some sort of spell, but it just wasn't going well for them, that's for sure. So, I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab a Sarah's Emissary. Born Upon the Wind seems pretty bad here. What else? So yeah, so Born doesn't seem great, because I don't actually have ways to kill on missions. I think I'll just go with some Fatal Pushes. Uh, I am worried about Blood Moon, but... Honestly, Blood Moon's pretty beatable. You just fetch a basic island, and you're cut off from green spells, you're cut off from black spells, and you, unless you grab a Swamp. But it's really not that big of a deal, unless it comes down like turn 1 or 2. It doesn't really happen in this format, so... I think we should be good like this. Don't feel like I need to board in Crows and Grips. Like, it's definitely annoying, but I don't think it's necessary to warp the deck around beating it. Especially since we don't actually have any green sources, so we would have to hold up three mana for the Blood Moon with Cross and Grip. Doesn't seem very efficient. Alright, this hand's a keep. It's, um... I can always grab an island after the uh, Blood Moon with Loran revealed, so I don't even need to worry about getting it too much. What I'm going to do here... Actually, since I took this Hedge Maze, I want to get a basic swap. So I'm going to play the Hedge Maze so I can cast a symbol on two. That's actually perfect. Uh, probably gonna like bolt me here or something. Sure. Uh, I didn't bring in the third 
It looked like it didn't, it didn't seem like they were like an aggressive type of creatures so much. Yeah, that's... Well, there's a show and tell. All right. So, actually, in this case, I think I'm supposed to play the... Polluted Delta and just pass? No, nah, I'm gonna play Under City Sewers and pass. Right? Because I need to get an Island with this revealed. That I can go for the turn three show and tell through a through a blood moon. Uh so actually I guess playing Under City Sewers doesn't actually accomplish prevail. I think I'll just do this now. Grab an island. And this telegraph's what I'm doing a little, but it's fine. Uh, I don't need this blue delta. And then we're cut off from grabbing a swamp. They can't play a blood moon and interact in a particularly meaningful way, so this should be fine. It's possible that I should have tried to brainstorm, maybe, but I have a blue source anyway. One ring. I mean, sure, that's pretty good. If they can find some way to remove this Atraxa, and I don't manage to find a show and tell, which I didn't, then maybe things look a little sketchy. Uh, let's see. Probably just gonna go for a brainstorm since we don't actually have a way to cast it for time anymore. Uh, draws a card. Sure. Pitch. I guess like assemble, assemble, since we literally don't have a way to cast it. Yeah, the basic club doesn't really matter here. We can cast everything in our hand, and there's no way to get down the assemble the team, so I think this is fine. Uh, and now we're just one show and tell away from going off, and, you know, decent chance that they actually just cannot kill the attacks in time. Or even if they do and it gets, like, just a hit in, then they'll die their own one ring. That's also a possibility. Either way, it's just not looking great for the opponent, but I guess they do have outs. Uh, I'm a little scared of Karn. Karn? What are they getting with Karn? That's that's the interesting question. Uh Okay, because I was gonna say, like, maybe I'm supposed to attack Karn, but if the best they can do is a worm coil engine, then Oh, kinda punish, whatever. I don't punish for not having a black source now. Yes, I could have Fetch with the Polluted Delta for a Swamp, cast, brainstorm, cycle, or Enfield. Maybe that would have been better. Yeah. But I'm just going to go face with this. Because I want their one rank to kill them. Uh, So, like, attracts is lethal unless they kill it this turn or find another one ring. They would have gotten their best card with Karn, just in case I killed it next turn. So, that best card was Worm Coil. It means they don't have, like, any one rings on the sideboard. Maybe they have boat and they can somehow crew it. Just doesn't seem like Karn's actually super relevant. Really. That's kind of crazy. Like, you had Stone Coil in your sideboard, which is a card that completely breaks a Traxa, and yet you decided to not get it the first time with Karn? Like, the only way this would make sense is if you had a second Karn and you wanted to bait me into not attacking Karn. But then, if you have a second Karn, you want me to attack Karn. Uh, I'll lose life. Sure. Well, still live for a show and tell, though it'll be a little delayed. Ah, there we go. Alright, put two lands on top, I suppose. Doesn't really matter. I could have made myself Thoughtseize proof, but... Like, I'm not super worried about Thoughtseize from them. Yeah, and just to show you, Stone Quill, pro multicolored. Completely stops the tracks, uh, dead in her tracks. But, you know, this one ring's kind of getting there. Uh, like, if they tap to draw, then they're on turn a two-turn clock. Like, obviously, they can find a one ring, that's great. Wormclo is going to attack and trade for this Atraxa. So it wouldn't have actually killed them, I suppose. But this show and tell is going to put a neat little bow on everything. Yeah, so in hindsight, should have fetched a basic swamp. Probably just strictly correct to do, I guess. 
there wasn't actually too much upside in not doing that. Um, back to the one ring. Wait, you know what? I'm actually just, I guess I'm not going to block. I mean, nothing matters at this point, but I figure like if I didn't have access to the show and tell, it's probably better to not block. Uh, you can draw a card at this point. I don't want to get demolished by something random. All right. Yeah, now this should be just about it. Yeah, not finding an attacks off, not fighting, showing off a track that was like kind of unfortunate, but then we made up for it by just finding one naturally off the brainstorms. So, second Palantir, except that's just going to legend rule it. So, not sure why you would do that. Give someone with less info and scoop it up. There. All right, on to the next one. All right. Match number three, and this sounds pretty sketchy. It's got a DT for a turn three Shaman Tell, but that kind of requires me to draw into something. Having Mystic Sanctuary in hand isn't great. Also, Masterminds. Like, this, this hand just... Just not feeling it. I think this is a mall. Wow, this is... This is a lot better, holy. Oh, damn. Um. I'm supposed to throw back the assemble. Because I want Dark Grit for Show and Tell, put it on me, cast Traxa. The argument for keeping the assemble is that it's castable and, uh, just as good as Omni with a. just as good as a Trax with an Omni in play. But. Uh, it's honestly just wasn't super castable with that hand anyway, and if something happens to the Omni, having an attract is nice. Because if my opponent like, went on, led on Thoughtseize, they would have to hit Show and Tell because they can't hit both payoffs. Uh, like, grew up through the attracts, so but that's pretty risky. Um, so then that leaves me uh, with a Show and Tell in the graveyard, which I can then Mystic Sanctuary back, which is better. So that was kind of my logic. Um, but. Looks like we're against Belcher, and nothing matters. Because we just got the, uh... Got the turn two. Lots of turn two kills in this video, like... Jeez. Like, I don't usually run this hot, but I'll take it. Uh, yes. Yeah, me... Literally impossible to whiff from here, I think. Uh, yeah. Alright, I found the DT. DT is going to get another tutor, which is going to tutor for something. Yep. Put a scoop set up. Alright, so this matchup is pretty good. Going to go for a uh, Sanctity and a Sarah's Emissary because I can't beat those cards. Going to go for Born Upon the Wind because you can Born. Basically, the risk is, right? You put you cast Show until they put in Belcher and they belt you for 20. Oh, like, 45 or whatever. Um, that's the main issue. Also, they, they can turn to you, but that's... Unless you got a thought, you can't do much about that. Um, but yeah, really don't want that to happen to you, so uh, you can just board upon the wind and go off in response to that. Uh, gonna go down two digs. Gonna go down a Lorien Revealed. On the draw, and Lorien Revealed matters less in this kind of game. It's faster, and I think I'm gonna go down... I'm gonna go down... See, I think I'm just supposed to go down third dig that I'm. It's just way too slow. That is kind of low on dig the time, but it's, it's probably fine. I think it's fine. Yeah, they just have a really hard time beating Leyland of Sanctity, so opening one of those would be nice. Sarah's Emissary as well. Some must have like random stuff like Assassin's Trophy and whatnot, but. Even if it slows them down by a turn, that can be enough. Um, well, it's unfortunately unkeepable. Um, yeah. It's rough, because, like, Omni is way more important than anything else here. Omni and Show and Tell, and this hand has neither, and only one tutor, and... Yeah, I think it's all as well. Well. This is actually not the worst hand ever, because we've got two tutors. So we can assemble the combo 
pretty quickly. If they get Thoughtseize here, then that's not great. Yeah. Takes the Demonic Tutor, right? Yeah, it's just strictly better. Um, so that's pretty annoying. But if we draw either Show until or Omni, we can just tutor for the second, and then things look fine. Probably not going to have enough time to Mystic Sanctuary. Entirely possible that we're just dead next turn. Uh, we got the Sewer, I think. Oh, you know what? That's That's got to be too important to pass up. Because they don't actually have a Veil of Summer up or anything like that, and... What? Okay, so they have an Ancient of Treachery. That's good to know about, for sure. The rest of our hand. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Besiege. So they're two men off winning. They take the Besiege. Take the Dark Ritual. I'm gonna cast a symbol. I think I'm maybe supposed to take Dark Ritual since. No, I think I'm supposed to take Besiege since otherwise they can find a Belcher and then. Actually, no, no, because they just really can't cast the Besiege without assembling for Dark Ritual. They don't want to sack the Max Star. I think I'm supposed to take Dark, dark Ritual. I think that's correct. And now, now that's actually not bad. I would say. Also, it's interesting about like i could board in uh cursing grip because i can show until put an attack so cursing grip their thing but that doesn't really work unless you're on six mass so i don't think that's great all right inquisition is fine I'm, I'm fine playing a slower game here uh i'm just gonna get to my mystic sanctuaries and then things look pretty good for me uh and as much as i would like to get to mystic sanctuaries not by scrying lands to top well you know what? I can show and tell that into play, and it's actually not bad. So, I draw another land here that I can, like, Mystic Sanctuary for DT, maybe? No, it, it is kind of rough, though. Like, they're gonna, they've got, like, a couple turns max, I would say. Huh. Uh, it's actually pretty useless. So it does mean that Mystic Sanctuary for DT is viable. Yeah, they're probably going to get Belcher this turn. That was... Oh, no, I'm just dead. Okay. Yeah, if they draw a Dark Mitchell for turn, found one off the Tutor. And now they have a Belcher in hand and they're getting Channel, I would assume. That would make the most sense based on how they're playing. Slash Iron Craig V or whatever. Right. All right, and I have the Belcher. Sure. Well, you know, we multi five got Inquisition toys, kind of bricked pretty hard, and opponent drew pretty well. Uh, fine. That's fine. I think we just run it back. Being on the play is, is pretty nice here because speed matters a lot. Also, I'm not sure if they have Veil of Summer or not, but dodging it on the play is pretty nice. Because Lazi is obviously great against a deck that really needs to get one specific card to play. And now this this hand's actually great. Because I just go turn one, show and tell, turn two, tur turn one, Thoughtsy is turn two, two, or turn three, show and tell. Like, this is, this is actually just great. Uh, obviously, still loses to some things, but. Like, it still could definitely go wrong, but. Uh, interesting. So, one, two, so I could take their only black land. Other than that, I could take their agent of treachery. Take their agent of treachery. Take their only black land. You know what? I'm just gonna take their agent of treachery. I'm going to hope to find an Omni. I don't want to have to find Omni and Born. Well, okay. Funny. Yeah. So now, I mean, they, they need, like, really insane draws here to win here, so... Yeah. Looks like we should just about get there. And actually, finding Born is really clutch. Yeah, maybe Agent of Treachery was... Not sure. Cause cause now they would be able to put in Belcher, Dark Ritual, kill me. 
so interesting to see if they go for it here. They probably should. Oh, wait, hold on. Actually, it's not that easy because the show and tell put in Omni, they put in Belcher. But I can't actually guarantee that I win. So if I pass the turn. Oh, Dark Vigil Beseech. Um, I think I'm supposed to pass because then I can go. Mystics, yeah, 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 I'm supposed to pass, because next turn I can go Mystic Sanctuary, put the sample on top of my deck, then I can go Show and Tell, Omni, Brainstorm, they try to hit me in response, Born Upon the Wind, draw it, and then go off. Assemble the team. That's actually also does the trick, because this means that they won't be able to uh, hold up mana. And so now, an Agent of Treachery gets me, but I have Born, so it doesn't get me. Uh, I'm not gonna brainstorm yet. Uh, or I might as well fire off the Dark Ritual, I guess. Put a assemble on top. Action. Put an Omni. Yep, as expected. And then we're just gonna go ahead and cast a Born Upon the Wind. And go off in response. Yeah, this matchup is pretty good. It's just this sequence is really strong against them. Um, I guess I'm just grabbing an assemble with this assemble. Looking for an attracts or a dig. Not super worried about whiffing here because I also have this brainstorm and assemble just looks at so many cards. And now attacks, it should just be game. Alexa, Omni, brainstorm, assemble, and assemble. Get, uh, yeah, let's just get DT. DT for Masterminds, and I'm probably going to see them scoop here. They scooped last game at this position. Nope. Well, we'll show it. Bam. Got there. All right. Those have been some pretty quick games. All right, that's going to do it for the gameplay. Overall, we get 3 0, which honestly is not surprising. This deck is just the most absurd thing to be doing in Timeless right now. I think it's the best deck. I think it's pretty safe to say that. There are decks that can beat it, you know, but overall, it just destroys a lot of the hate for it. You know, we fought through Lavinia and Deafening Silence in one of our games by just putting it in the tracks up and beating face. Yeah, this deck's just nuts. Yeah, it got a bunch of turn two kills, which is nice. Uh, it doesn't happen quite as often as it did in this video, but. I still really like the possibility of that, thanks to Dark Ritual, so if you're, if you're wondering why I'm on the Dark Ritual version instead of the Impulse version, well, pretty good example. And yeah, and just a, a quick little plug before I close this out. Um, make sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe, give me all that engagement if you like the video. Uh, help it reach more eyes, would really appreciate that. And uh, I read all the comments, and you guys my questions, I'll respond. So, if you got anything to ask me, go ahead and drop one. And, you know, also, go ahead and join my Discord. I just open it up to the public, and um, you should go ahead and click the link in the description if you want to get early access to deck lists that I'm working on, and um, ask me questions. I just post some random things there, so yeah. Go ahead and check that out, and um, check out my Patreon. Uh, alongside the articles and guides and um, everything that I post on my Patreon, also, patrons get a access to certain patron-only channels in the Discord server. So you get priority for asking, getting your questions answered, and more in-depth responses, and, you know, just get more of my attention as a thank you for being one of my patrons, and you get you know, access to more deck lists, arena codes, stuff like that. So uh, go ahead and check that out if you'd like. Anyway, that's going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.